Today we're going to talk about the kinetic molecular theory of gases. So the kinetic molecular theory of gases applies only to gases. This is not true for solids or liquids. First of all, the first tenet is gases consist of tiny particles, and those particles are either atoms or molecules. The second thing about the kinetic molecular theory is uh, the gas particles themselves are so small compared with the distance between them that the volume or size of the individual gas particles is, is assumed to be zero. So when you talk about the volume of a gas, actually the, the gas particles themselves are not the volume. The volume is a space in between the particles. The third tenet of the kinetic molecular theory. Gas particles are in constant random motion colliding with the sides of the container. The collisions with the container, or the sides of the container, is what causes the pressure that's exerted by the gas. So when those particles hit the side of the container, that's where the pressure comes from, those collisions. Fourth thing, fourth tenet, or part of the kinetic molecular theory, gas molecules display no attractive or repulsive forces for one another. So you will not see the assumption is two gas molecules will not stick together, nor if they come in contact, nor will they repel. So they behave and move independently. And the last part of the kinetic molecular theory is gas molecules have different velocities. The average kinetic energy is proportional to the temperature in Kelvin. And so the gases that conform to these, uh, these assumptions are called ideal gases. A couple things about it. Well, first of all, we mentioned the idea of temperature. And that it, we said that the temperature is proportional in Kelvin to the average kinetic energy. Now, one thing we mentioned is that all the gas molecules are not moving at the same speed. And here's an illustration of that. We see a gas at 300K, 600K, 900K, and 1200K. Notice all those are high temperatures. But notice within that, this uh, is a graph of the number of molecules. For each graph or each temperature, there is a variation. So for example, we will see here, for example, at 300K, zero degrees Kelvin, there's very few particles there, but sort of the 300 degrees Kelvin is pretty much the average temperature we see here. So if we were to follow this up all the way from the bottom, that would be our 300K. And then there are particles that are moving faster than that. You see particles around here, then there are particles that are moving slower than that. So at any given temperature, there's part that the average kinetic energy is that just that. It's an average. There's particles that are moving faster and particles that are moving slower. And we talk about kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. This is actually a very important equation when we talk about gases. Kinetic energy, we want to th think about this value right here as the same as temperature. So kinetic energy is the average temperature. And when we express this temperature, we want to express the temperature in Kelvin. And we can say they're proportional when we express that in a Kelvin temperature. And then, of course, the other things that are in here are the value m for mass and v for velocity. What this tells us, if we have two different particles, let's say we have something light, such as hydrogen, H2, and hydrogen has a mass of, molar mass of about 2 grams per mole. And then if we have something like CO2, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is much heavier. Oxygen has a mass of 16. 16 times 2 is 32. And plus carbon is 12. So carbon dioxide has a mass of 44. And it's 44 grams per mole. And so if you have both these gases at the same temperature, they have the same kinetic energy. But the heavier gas will actually be moving slower because it has a greater mass. And the lighter gas will be moving faster because, it has a light, because it's of its lighter mass. Because mass times velocity equals kinetic energy. So this tells us heavier particles move slower and lighter particles move faster when they're at the same temperature. So let's uh, equate temperature. So when you increase in temperature, what, what does this do to pressure? Well, a couple things. Gas molecules move faster. When they move faster, they're going to hit the sides of the container more often. The second thing is uh, particles collide with more energy. When they hit the sides of the container, they're, since they're moving faster, they're going to hit, hit with more energy than they did before they were at a lower temperature. So the relationship between temperature and pressure, we see that as temperature increases, if volume and number of moles are held constant, there should be an increase in pressure because gas molecules are moving faster. 
and since they're moving faster, they're going to hit the sides of the container with more energy and also more often. So the relationship between temperature and volume is another uh, situation we'll also explore. So let's first of all look at this situ situation, relation, the relationship excuse me, between temperature and pressure. Now, what I'd like you to see is look at this and say, what, what do you think is held constant? And if you see both of these, we could say this was situation one, and over here this is situation two. What do you think is held constant? Well, if you were to count, you would see that the number of particles would be the same. So one thing that's held constant is in the number of moles. The other thing that you would see is both these containers are the same size. So the volume is held constant. So what is variable here? Well, what you see is variable is the speed. The first one, the, the, it is a cooler gas, and so the temperature is one thing that is a variable. So we have a cooler gas, and then the second one represents a gas at a higher temperature. When you have a gas at a higher temperature, the molecules have uh, collide with this container more often, and they have more energetic collisions. So the next variable would be pressure. So this should help explain why if you increase temperature there should be a direct relationship to pressure because the molecules will move faster so as you increase temperature pressure increases. So their uh, kinetic energy leads to increase in pressure. So let's look at another one that shows a relationship between these. We see in this slide there's a relationship between temperature and pressure. The same exact type of slide we saw last time. This side we, uh, we see there the, to represent the temperature change have a candle here. And to represent the particles moving faster, they have thicker arrows that mean the molecules have more energy. And so they're moving with much more energy than they had last, the previously. So as you increase temperature, there is a direct increase in the pressure. And it's also denoted by the size of the, of the arrows. Here we have small arrows, and here the pressure of the gases against the side of the container is much higher. So we see increase in temperature we see over here also an increase in pressure. And this is uh, explained by the kinetic and molecular theory because the molecules are moving faster and, and colliding more often with the side of the container and with more energy. Next, what is the relationship between temperature and volume? So for this, what do we look at? Uh, what are the variables here? And for also what is held constant. Now notice what is held constant for both of these is the number of moles. And then the other thing that's held constant, notice the P external, the pressure is held constant. So what is, what's happening as you go from here to here, that there's been an increase in temperature. So as you increase temperature, the particles are moving faster. But this time, so the variables will be temperature and volume. So what we see here is if you increase temperature and the container is able to expand, such as a balloon or a piston, the, the volume will proportionally increase. So if you double the temperature, you will double the volume. Notice that we'll, when we speak of doubling the temperature, doubling the volume, that would have to be in Kelvin. Let's look at one. So we see this also if we look at a graph such as this, relationship between temperature and volume. Now here, instead of having a piston with the same amount of pressure, we have a variable, a, a balloon, which is elastic and can get bigger, or a container. So as you add heat, each time the balloon is able to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So Charles's law in the kinetic molecular theory, as we decrease the temperature of the gas molecule, and this is going the opposite direction, cooling the gas, as we decrease the temperature, gas molecules have less energy. With less energy, they collide with, with, uh, as, with not as much force, and the lower force causes the volume to decrease. So it works in both directions. So that concludes our discussion of kinetic molecular theory. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.